I have a news update for you. The People's Republic of China has just announced they are severing relations with every country on this planet. And their ambassador will be here to talk about it. And that'll be right after this really important message from one of our sponsors. Outside the KXLA TV newsroom, awaiting the arrival of the ambassador from China. Now, word has it that the Chinese have mastered the art of miniaturization, and they've shrunk all of the Chinese in China to two inches tall. What will they think of next? Moment. I'll tell you. Part of the art of being a woman is knowing when not to be too much of a lady. Your name, please. Ambassador Afong. Well, the commercial's on right now, so why don't you go set up? 35 seconds to air. Merv, the Chinese ambassador is here. Merv? Merv! Oh, oh, good, good. Good, thank you, guys. Fine, now you leave that right there, sir. And the boys, well, you can all go in and watch the show in the control room. 20 huh? seconds. I stay right here. Oh, no, you can't do that. I mean, we have uh, cameras and booms and lights. You're going to be in the way. I stay right here. I guard or no dice. We go back home. No, 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 no. Oh, Lou. Lou. 10 seconds. Uh, Lou, um, I scan your shoot around the zipper head. Yeah. In five, four, three, two, one. He's on. The ambassador to the United Nations from the People's Republic of China, Mr. Ah Fong, announced at noon today that his country is severing all relations, diplomatic, commercial, and cultural, with all other nations on Earth. Without further ado, I have the honor of presenting Mr. Ah Fong. Mr. Afong, when you say that China is severing relations with the rest of the world, is that because China is mad at something that somebody did? Definitely not. Uh, you see, uh, the rest of the world has nothing left to offer us. They are very backward. Uh -huh. They would not appreciate some of the things that we would be willing to share. Have you solved all the problems that there are? Oh, no, not quite. Uh, we are still in the dark ages um, on simple things in life, little things like uh, gravity. Hmm. Is there a chance that China will ever allow a visitor in again? Oh, of course, as long as he or she is willing to sleep in a matchbox and live off a uh, half a pound of rice a year. Well, I guess that excludes me. <laughs> oh, boy. I wonder, Mr. Afong, could you leave us today with some words of wisdom? Oh, well, uh, I understand that uh, you are happy the way you are. Enormous, sweaty, backward kind of people. But if you're happy that way, uh, you have my blessings. I would like to leave you, however, with um, the key to the success of Chinese sciences. The key might be found in one word. Twin. Twin? Twin. About. Remember the words of Confucius. He's the one that said, two heads are better than one. <laughs> I love your idiomatic expressions. In fact, I have a very appropriate expression for leaving you. And that is, to you, the people of the United States, up your ass with mobile gas! <laughs> you can't say ass on network television. <laughs> Oh, shit, I just did. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, Mer. As watchers of my show must know, the most beautiful of all the beautiful people, as far as I'm concerned, are Caleb and Leticia Swain. He's worth about $60 million, and she has absolutely double that amount. Now, the big news. Leticia is going to give birth to twins. Yes, that's right, twins. And, of course, you know, breeding will tell. Now, we do have our cameras right at the hospital. Waiting for the big news. Of course, you know they have never done an honest Dr. day's Murphy. work in their life. Dr. You know, Dan they Murphy. don't know where their money comes from. I said, why, you don't even know where your ancestors stole it from. And I said, now, Caleb, do you know that your grandfather made his fortune on nerve gas in the lake pond? Well, he looked at me with that inevitable smile, and he said, history was never one of my best subjects. Oh, and he's so gorgeous. I could gobble him up. You know, I just cannot stand the thought of a woman as beautiful as her owning the phone company. Some lucky father has one little bottle of joy. Course, uh -huh. And she said to me, You're him. Mona, I, 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 
How's that? Yeah, my doll. I get you're the beautiful book. people, and you're out here with me just like anybody else. With your pants, America. Well, my wife and I never believed in putting on the door. Don't you know what I mean? Just because we got money coming out of our ears doesn't mean we have to act like we're any better than anybody else. Boy, you are democratic. Oh, you shouldn't even mention it. You can imagine what kind of a kid I'm going to have. All babies are beautiful. Ever see a baby rhinoceros? I don't know why they let people as ugly as me reproduce. I should be circumcised. You mean castrated? Castrated, right. Yeah, I should be castrated. When they bring my kid to that window, I wouldn't look if I were you. I'm sure it'll be a beautiful specimen, Mr. Uh... Shilfit. Mr. Shilfit. Well, we're the last ones. It must be you. Could be you. Twins? That's a repulsive thought. There's Marlene Selden. Sterilization, please. Oh, Jesus. Oh, never mind. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Dr. Frankenstein, is Letitia okay? Oh, she's fine. She's sleeping now. Did she deliver already? Deliver. I don't know what happened. It was a billion to one chance. Those are your children. They're little baby monsters. some close-ups. Our viewers would just love an exclusive interview with a rich and beautiful father of the beautiful twin. Between them. Oh, no, my dear, they're not Cyclops. But they might as well be Cyclops. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Close enough. Lum Fung, Lum Fung, come in. You dance on the bridge. Hey, Dick Dr. Doolittle. Hey, Dick Dr. Doolittle. This is Lum Fung. 
People's Republic of China spy number 5613 calling. Come in, People's Republic headquarters. Lung Fung over. Yes, Lung Fung. Have you found ugly twins? Ugly? I have found the biggest, ugliest twins in history. My dear, you mustn't blame yourself. The whole natural order is going askew with the mainland Chinese two inches high and gasoline up to $28 a pint. And as your old family doctor, I must do what is best for you and Caleb. I want you to go home as though nothing has happened. The twins will stay here where we have the finest life support systems, apart from the Chinese, of course. And we'll keep them alive as long as we possibly can, maybe weeks, maybe months. But that should be our ordeal, not yours. My dear, you and Caleb are it to the world to go on being beautiful and rich and cheerful. Attention, I'm going to lunch. Yes. There will be no pain. You're probably right. Oh, you're always right. But I, 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 I want them to leave the hospital. I want them in a place in case they notice something. I just want them to feel that they're at the center of things and that they're at home. Is anybody you need say no more. It shall be done. the boss? Yes. Ah, I want a job. Well, you're a cook. Well, we do need a cook. But I have to ask you, are you a communist? No, communist and bullshit. I'm fun crazy about free enterprise. Your face looks very familiar to me. We all look alike. What I seen them face. Well, you'd have to cook for a staff of 30 people and uh, two children. Ah. Do you like children? Bet you have. Welcome, then. Thank you. I am Sylvester. Sylvester? The butler. You remember, you advertised in the Mortician's Weekly. Don't worry, sir. You, you can put the children in my hands. I will treat them. Just as I would my own. <laughs> now, sir, I will go and familiarize myself with my private quarters. Just, just a moment. What? My name is Quentin. Oh, I'm a handyman. Uh, how do you do? the economy going cuckoo and the price of gasoline rising rapidly, economists are predicting the possibility of prices hitting $10,000 a gallon. In light of that possibility, the government has found a way of converting ordinary chicken manure into fuel. The chicken manure converter. This may in turn affect the price of an average order of bacon and eggs. How about a Kuyong? Kaput, so to speak. Elsewhere in the news, a chicken stuffed spill off the coast of Santa Barbara has brought thousands of garbage eating seagulls to the area. Santa Barbara Mayor Theodore B. Cleaver is quoted as saying, What in the world's going on here? Why did all this junk have to fall in my ocean? <laughs> Is here. I'm not sick. It's my life that's sick. Here comes the faithful old family doctor once again. Mm, my dear Letitia, I dropped everything the moment I heard that my favorite little baby of all was sick. Roll over. I'm not a baby anymore. My dear, I delivered you. You'll always be a baby to me. That's not all you've delivered. So that's the trouble again. And it always will be. How long did you say they would live? A day? <laughs> Two days? I, I, I forget. Two weeks? Two months at most? Oh, my dear, doctors don't know everything. We're not Chinamen. It's been 15 years. 
something is telling me that I must see them. You don't know what they look like. They've grown so ugly that I would hesitate even to describe them. Well, what about their intelligence? About on the level with cantaloupes, I said. Cantaloupes? The zucchinis, then. But my dear, we have each other. You mustn't suppose they're starved to an infection. They adore each other. They even suck each other's thumbs. Oh, if only there was some sort of sign telling me what to do. <laughs> Mrs. Swain, how come you pay no attention to the wonderful clue I give to the American people? Who are you? Why, I am Ah Fong, the former ambassador for China. You didn't see me on television 15 years ago? Yes. Yes, we, we did. You bet your ass you did. We had the highest Nielsen rating for a new shot in the entire history of the American television. I said that the reason for success in Chinese science is twins. Now, you have twins. You can't put two and two together? You know about our twins? A damn sight more than you people do. You have uh, Wilbur and Eliza. You have been spying on my poor little monsters. I'll see here. Be quiet, you quack. Listen, we found out in the People's Republic of China if you put two lonely, ugly, not good for nothing twins together for a long enough time, nighttime, daytime. You let them communicate. They come out with a genius that put Albert Einstein to shame. Not my two. Uh, please, we must get this together. Uh, you people, the way you are, you, you're dragging down this entire planet. The last good idea you had was Scott's tape. Come on, we're Chinese. We're the nice people. We're not bad guys. We're just businessmen, right? All we want to do is just negotiate a little contract for control of gravity. And we want approval. We want your approval. We want the people's approval. We want the president's approval. You go ahead, you call the president, and you tell that dumb summer bitch that the major natural resource for this country is right here. Wilbur and Eliza. <laughs> Come 
And the children. And the children. The odd folks. Whatever they are, I'm getting paid to look after them. And that is what I tend to do. Tis Bayesh Hashish Poigra. I love you, Eliza. I love you. I could never live without you. When you go away from me, I feel like part of me is dying. But then when you come back, I'm whole again. Yeah, me too. This is sure a queer planet. Where the main idea is to be as dumb as possible. And if you're not dumb enough, you just drink more champagne. And with all the champagne that Sylvester and the servants drink, they must be considered the dumbest people in the world. Oh, yeah? Well, you know what? Sylvester says that mother and father are more stupid than they are. I hope we act dumb enough for them. I want mother and father to be proud of us. Oh, I'm sure they are. You can bet. to my master. It is unseemly. Bring me, bring me my pants. Quickly. Hello, hello. Give me a moment, sir. Just attending to matters below stairs. Oh, yes, of course. Fine. Very good. How nice to hear your voice again, sir. Yes. Yes, well, Sylvester. My wife and I will be there tomorrow in the afternoon, along with Dr. Frankenstein, and then we'll be meeting the President of the United States, and he'll have two Secret Service men with him. Yes, 
Listen, Alfie, if there's anything at all we can do for those wonderful, adorable children of yours, just tell us and consider it done. Do you have yes. any encyclopedia Britannica? Encyclopedia. Any of your monkeys order an encyclopedia Britannica? My brother-in-law used to sell them. That was two years ago. The feeling was, sir, that no child should grow up in a home without the Encyclopedia Britannica. Oh, of course. Very good. You were right about the Encyclopedia Britannica. Absolutely right. They have a set there. Yes, and your children have read it ten times through. I know, because our most reliable agent has been watching them. The cook. Of course, the cook. I knew his face was familiar. When I asked him if he's a communist, he said no. Um, yes. Uh, well, you see, he was under orders to lie. What is the world coming to when you can't even trust the Chinese? Look, uh, you people go get acquainted with your children. And we'll come back real soon, and then we'll make a big deal for the control of gravity, okay? Oops. Well, we just felt that we had to see our children in spite of what they became. I get the winners! <laughs> Landing our destination at 1200 hours. Thank you, Ensign. Uh, that's Lieutenant, sir. This is an airplane, not a boat. Oh, yeah, yeah I keep forgetting the press of duties, you know. Uh, at ease, at ease. Uh... It certainly is exciting to have re established contact with the People's Republic of China after all these years. Yes, Ensign, but they make me feel like such a jackass. So far behind them in bicycles, contraceptives, jelly beans, you name it, they've got us lashed to the mast. This must be a very important mission. It's in the lap of the gods. Is everything all right with you, Mr. President? Yes, yes, of course, yes. It just seems like there's something troubling you. It's so embarrassing. This airplane, Air Force One, once a symbol of a great nation, powered by chicken shit. But we'd be walking if it wasn't for chicken shit. Yes, I guess I am grateful for the damn stuff. Well, as you Navy people say, damn the torpedoes, Gridley, and full steam ahead. Dismissed. I like that boy. Ha! 
for a little liquid refreshment. Our children may actually be intelligent. Why wouldn't they be? They come from perfectly marvelous stock. The Fords, the Vanderbilts, the Rockefellers. I hope that it's all right for the president to land on that old airstrip. That's why we've got a vice president. Hmm. We mustn't find out how much gasoline we're using. You better hide the sports car. I'll get out the horse and wig. Take your panties down off the flagpole and run up Oak Lurie. Look at this mess. Oh, my goodness. I must worry like this. I get wrinkles around my eyes. Oh, my lord. My lady. How wonderful to meet you at last. Oh, uh, we're not lord and lady today. No, 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 of course. How silly of me. The president is already ensconced at the library. Oh, Mr. Oh, oh, doctor, how distinguished you look. May I take your briefcase? No, thank you. No, I, I'll keep it. I have some intelligence and aptitude tests. Intelligence, yes. I want to give to the children. The children, yes, sir. Excellent, excellent. Good idea, sir. <laughs> The doctor has brought you some intelligence tests. Can you imagine that? Does a horse have feathers or hair? Feathers. Right, quills, yes. A horse has quills, like a porcupine, yes. Don't forget it. I wonder if it's time to teach you the words for mama and papa. Say papa. Holding very far home, spirit. Say, Mama. Good. Work perfect. I'll, I'll point them out to you. Remember, they gave you the precious gift of life. And they pay all the bills. Okay. Papa. Mama. George, they've got it. Would you like some apple cider, Mr. President? Is uh, this all there is to drink in the house? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. President. I, I should have no, thought to bring something along. But you see, Dr. Frankenstein gathered ah. together this staff of people to take care of the children. They all hate alcohol. Distinguished, sir. Uh, my lady. Mr. President, the children are ready. Are the children really so smart? You must be the judge of that. I have come to love them so it is impossible for me to be objective. Well, the Chinese say they're the greatest resource this country has today. And we know that the Chinese cannot be mistaken about anything, don't we, sir? Oh.
really smell good. I wish we had some napalm. the children now? They are in their bedroom. Are they all right? I don't know, madame. They were sprayed with mace. That was necessary, I suppose. So it would seem. Well, has it ever happened before? I don't think so. Then it was all our fault. Letitia, stop. What was? Will you please stop and let us just well, go? Well, we failed Let's them. get him the We call. have not been good and parents. And let's never come back. We have brought them yet. into a world where they don't belong. How could I have given birth to two drooling, totem poles? It couldn't be helped, darling. That's all in the past. What a cruel joke for the Chinese to play. What was the point of that? They don't think like regular people, sweetheart. I'm so gullible. I actually believed that they would be spouting Latin, Greek, and algebra literature. Spanish, IG. I was gullible, too. I feel just like you do. Not that you know what mother means. And your mother is leaving you now forever. I have failed you. Perhaps there was no way to serve you, but I wish people had let me try, and it's too late now. You, my own flesh, are as foreign as Mars to me. If there had been the least flicker of intelligence in your eyes or the least syllable of language on your lips. I, I, I came here with the thought of maybe starting over again and beginning a family of some sort. Oh, it's just, it's cruel and stupid of me to insist on these little signs before I can truly love you. And I just, well, I have nothing but contempt for myself. <clears throat> As for you, well, you are surely as beautifully noble as anyone, given your bodies and mine could ever be. Good luck. And goodbye. Mother? Oh, God, what a time for her to say mother by accident. Mother, dear? 
Mother, look at us, please. Mr. and Mrs. Swain. Mr. and Mrs. Caleb Rockefeller Swain. Of 229 Peacock, Santa Barbara, California. I'm so scared. Be not afraid, Mother. We bring you tidings of great joy. Listen, we are not dumb. We just thought that you all wanted very much for us to be as dumb as possible. Nous pouvons être aussi bêtes ou intelligents que vous voulez. This is a very weird planet. It's just confusing to us because it's good to be dumb and it's bad to be smart. You know, do as the Romans do. When in Rome, that is. I had it backwards. I swear this is the first sign of intelligent life I've ever observed in them. Oh, well, any time we showed one, you found some way to put it out. Yeah. I have some intelligence tests. We'll find out what we've got. All oh, this just totally turned my world upside down. Oh. And by George, the whole family <laughs> reunited. <laughs> Where's my sister? Don't worry about her. But we've never been apart before. This feels terrible. I I've been cut in half. You'll have to get used to it, won't you? No. I feel very dumb without Elijah. Uh, hello, Sylvester, you there? Yes, Doctor. I'm just about to give the knee reflex test. All right, stand by. Turn around. Cross your legs. Absolutely no reaction at all here. Anything on your side? Sylvester, are you there? Hello, hello, hello. She kicked him as a boy. That's just as I thought. You know, there's a definite telepathic connection between those two. We must somehow keep the girl distracted to make sure they don't cheat. All right, 10 4. Begin. until I say begin. What? Wait until I say begin. Oh, okay. Begin. My dear, you're being timed. Speed is part of the test. Look, the seconds are ticking away. Begin. Where is Wilbur? We're interested in Eliza now. Hmm. My dear, don't pretend to be stupid. We know exactly how smart you are now. Now pick up the pencil. Liza. Pick up the pencil. Now read the first question. I can't read and write. You can't read and write? No. Wilbur does those things. I do other things. What other things? I'm good at guessing. See, you will read something to me. And you won't understand it, what it means exactly. But then all of a sudden, I can explain it, you see, to both of us. Oh, very well. I will read to you. Does a horse have feathers or hair? It's not the same. It has to be Wilbur. Surely you can answer a simple question like that, whether Wilbur's here or not. A horse has quills like a porcupine. Hey, uh, I can walk the dog. 
I can do around the world. Well, I have to confess that I've rather underestimated the intelligence of the twins in the past. I apologize for that. But you know, in view of these tests I've just made, I didn't miss by all that much. It's true that the boy has learned to read and write, which I suppose makes him about ten times as smart as the girl. But incidentally, they both said that a horse has quills like a porcupine. A horse has hair. Well, good for you. I feel as though life has used me as a yo-yo. You know, the boy should go to a military academy. He'd learn discipline there, and he'd learn how to relate to other people. You know, there's a very good one, uh, about 50 miles from here. It's run by an old friend of mine. What about the girl? I, mean, I think the girl should stay here. I mean, in familiar surroundings. You could cut way down on the staff. What could it take to make her happy? <laughs> A box of crayons, one, a doll. <laughs> well, I'd uh, better mosey on back to the White House. Had a wonderful time here. I'm awfully sorry that our babies weren't smarter. Yeah, well, we gave it a shot. Hi. Hi. Uh, we would like to take the test over again. Well, that's hardly necessary. We would like to take it together. If you would let us sit side by side. Why not bring in the Harvard faculty to help you? Sir? Tests are for individuals, not gangs. People must learn to paddle their own canoes. So you don't want us to be as smart as we can be? Not by cheating. Oh. Well, couldn't we cheat just once so we can show you how very smart we can be? No, I'm perfectly satisfied with the results as they are. Now, just a minute. I might be a simple soul from Illinois, but I also happen to be president of a once great nation whose entire economy is powered by chicken shit. Now, if you two kids think you can perform some kind of miracle by putting your heads together, <laughs> I, for one, would like to see it. Tell me, how can I get America running again? We don't understand. Well, there's such a thing as being too close. There is. Especially for brothers and sisters. You see, it's... <clears throat> uh, Caleb, tell the children about the incest taboo. Yes, my darling. The incest taboo. Back in the olden times, in Egypt and King Arthur and all of that, people noticed that when relatives married and had babies, the children usually turned out dumb and funny looking. Oh, so you and mother were relatives then? Well, of course not. Why would you ask such a stupid question? Well, because my sister and I are freaks. I think this conversation has gone askew some way. Uh, just try a little harder to keep your hands to yourself. Try a little harder. We must touch. They have to touch. Well, uh, couldn't you hold hands? I mean, after all, you are brother and sister. That's legal. It's all right to hold hands. That's just for math. Yeah, nothing higher than calculus. See, the president just asked a question that's the hardest one we ever had to answer. Well, what do you need to do to answer the question? Take off our shirts. And embrace? So our skins could touch. Who's the straight jacket? Yeah, we'll get on. 
course, there are some sacrifices that no citizen should ever have to make for his or her country. What's that wagon doing out there? Are they delivering ice cream? That's right, ice cream. They're delivering ice cream. I like ice cream. Uh. You guys want to tell me what this is all about? We're going to make a man out of you, kid. Well, isn't that bound to happen anyway? Where's my sister? Forget about your sister, kid. OK, where's the lady who says she's my mother? She's gone. She didn't want to cry. Right, there's something to cry about? Hey, there's something very sad happening here. If Eliza was here, she would tell me what it was. Hey, why are you locking me up? What's happening? Eliza! Colonel Sharp. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, hello. How are you? I don't believe it. He looked like such a loser only a few weeks ago. He still looks like a loser, Mr. Swain. That's why we had to give him that disguise. First day here, scared the wits out of everybody, especially me. Uh, Colonel, is that drill instructor Chinese? You're a great judge of character. Great judge, Mr. Swain. He is Chinese. Best drill instructor we had. Terrible tapper. Looks like the cook we once had. It turned out to be a communist spy. Don't let that bother you. I personally had him checked out. And he came up with a double IQ rating. Is that good? Good. The president himself only has a one IQ rating. <laughs> Please, Mr. Swain. Mr. Swain. What? To the right. Push. 
involved in all this. To the right, march! March on, march! Facing count, march on all, arm! Nineteen count, march on all, arm! to give a macho military atmosphere. Now wipe that grin off that smile, dipshit. Get Swain. One step forward. Step! This is your mother and father. If you say so, sir. Well, they've come here to see if we built your character the way I promised them I did. Yeah, yes, sir. Who is the biggest crybaby in this outfit? Uh... <laughs> uh Cadet Wilbur Rockefeller Swain, sir. Mm, did he cry all night and every night for his sister? Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. Now, Cadet Swain, you tell us this. What's the name of his sister? I, I can't remember, sir. Very good. Did that Swain one step backward? One, one. Stop! Stand up! My face! It's a miracle he can't remember his Four, sister's one. name. There's no miracle about it, Mrs. Swain. To you deprive him of sleep. Harangue. Constant harangue. And then there's that ego. We destroy it. Permanently. And if they wet their beds, we use electric diapers on them. I wish there was a place like this for Eliza. God made for ugly people. Can I at least put a reading light up there? I can't read. I would be glad to read to you. I couldn't concentrate. You're not the missing half of me.
Oliver, where are you? Funny stuff, we're gonna blow the shit out of you. We got former ambassador Ah Fong in here. But I didn't know. <laughs> Bounce him around like a goddamn ping pong ball. I can't tell you how sorry I am. You think you're sorry? We all busted up in here. But that wasn't all my fault, was it? Why, as I see them up. Ah Fong is coming. He got hurt by the ping pong table, but they're still coming. Keep your pants on. Ah Fong wants to speak to you. Come on. Get out of the way. Get down. Move it. Move it. Watch it. W watch it. Watch it. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Are you the same one or a different one? Different what? Chinese man. Oh, yeah. Very different Chinese man. He wouldn't really have zapped me, would he? Oh, yes, if necessary. I'm afraid. Oh, don't be afraid. I come with good news. See, you go to your brother. The two of you get together, you can be smart again. Then everything's gonna be okay. Then we make a deal for control of gravity, huh? Where is my brother? The uh, Custer Military School for Screwed Up Boys, about 50 miles from here. I should start walking. Oh, no need to walk. Right outside the house, hidden under bales of hay, there's a brand new Ferrari, all gassed up, ready to go. I don't think I can drive. Any fool can drive. You just put the key in the ignition, you turn the key, push the gas pedal, for you're gone. Listen, I'll tell you how to get there, okay? When you go out the gate, you turn right, okay? And down the hill, there's a fork in the road. You don't take a right fork, take a left fork. And then you turn right at the SO chicken shit station. What's that? My car! No! I can't let anyone in without permission. His name is Wilbur Swain. You tell him to come here. You tell him his sister is here. How do I know you're his sister? We're twins. Take a look. So I 
told General Patton. Georgie, you just took the wrong goddamn hill. Here's the study hall. Well, I just had to come and see for myself. You know, Wilbur's parents told me how much you'd done for the boy. Well, they promised us a brand new gymnasium. Oh, well, they did. Well, they're certainly good for it. Yeah. They're the only patients I've got. Well, you know, standing on your own two feet is the best way to do this kind of homework, to make you a fighter. Paddle your own canoe. Ow! He goofed off, looked up from the book. Just gave him a little electric shock. Variation on the electrified diaper scheme. Exactly, but a heck of a lot drier. However, sometimes we have to resort to an extra joke. Woo! Such as like Wilbur. Wilbur? Mm-hmm. You know, I can't believe that he's unable to recognize me. That's the beauty of it. He's forgotten everything. He was stuck up when he was able to read and write, but now he can't write a goddamn thing. Can't even write his own name. Now, you ask him for his name and ask him for his autograph right now. He'll give it to you Mark X if he's capable of making a mark. He's certainly poring over that book. Blank pages. Blank? Blank. Every book here has blank pages. And when they stop staring at those blank pages, ha, well, you saw what the hell happened to him. <laughs> and when I think they're ready, I'm going to give them pages with words on them. <laughs> first things first. Colonel Sharp, sir. Yes, Sergeant. You're wanting the infirmary. Something's happened to Cadet Stravinsky. His hair suddenly turned white, and he can't talk anymore. All right, I'll be right with you. I'd appreciate very much if you'd come and take a look at Silence Stravinsky before I hoodwink him right into the mute platoon. Uh, now, well, keep up the good work, Wilbur. Wait, wait, wait. They're coming after us with dogs. My God. 
I'm getting smarter all the time just being close to you. Are you getting smarter, too? Step on it! Forward! one I would just rather wait here and be eaten by dogs. Teeth <laughs> fire. What? Lonesome no more. A social scheme where everybody could be happy and loving all the time. Our essay on social reform, do you remember that? Happy and loving all the time, no matter what the situation is? Yeah, utopia, where everybody in the country has 10,000 sisters and brothers and 100,000 cousins. Everyone would be issued a new middle name consisting of a noun. The name of a flower or fruit. Or nut or vegetable or gem or bird or fish or mineral, connected by a hyphen to a number between 1 and 20. And anyone that would have the same middle name, such as Uranium, would be cousins. And anyone with the same number would be brothers and sisters. Anywhere you would go in this big country of ours, you would have a relative. So that if you were fighting with someone, chances are you would be someone in your own family. You're okay now, aren't you, Bill? Yeah, they were giving me electric shock treatment. But I'm all better now. We can't turn to anyone for help. So we've got to go back to the mansion. Finish up our essay on gravity. And escape to a place that we can call home. And live in peace and happiness. Forevermore. Yeah, that's nice. Cadet Swain? Cadet Swain! Yes? Now, this is a direct command. 
You come out right now, and there'll be no casualties. What about my sister? Oh, we'll take good care of her. Hell, we've even got your family doctor with us. Dr. Frankenstein? Wilbur, you remember me now. Oh, I certainly do. <laughs> I've taken care of you since you were knee-high to a grasshopper. To an elephant. You never knew anything about either one of us, you, you self-serving fraud. Your sister told you to say that. She's probably told you to say a great many other rude and ungrateful things. Well, but as your family doctor, I order you to come out of there and get away from her. No, we'll never be parted again. We would rather die than be parted. Well, but we have to come to the end. Maybe if we can fully understand how to control gravity, we can somehow get out of here. I'm not very good under pressure. All right. Fire the fuse! What the hell is that? God! It's the Chinese! Shoot him! turn our backs on you people for one moment without you getting yourselves into trouble. Well, I'll be a son of a bitch. Now listen to me, you overstuffed morons. I'm getting tired of all your boo-boos. You blast your way into the room and the most important information in the world is gonna go up in molecules. Please, just for once, let us handle this, okay? This red ship follows from a more general idea than that of general relativity, depending only upon the conservation of energy and upon the effective mass of a photon of energy being E equals mc squared. Thus, although the experimental tenet of general relativity were not fully conclusive... Wait a minute. Go back to the part about the photon. Yeah. Depending only upon the conservation of energy and mass of a photon of energy being E over C squared. That's where Einstein made his mistake. He got the math of a photon wrong. I know it. I can feel it. I can smell it. Well, you've never been wrong yet. I know I'm right. We can go right where Einstein went wrong. We're so close. We're so close. Hold me. Yes. We're not going anywhere with you. Uh, I'm afraid you have no choice. After all, we are the most powerful people in the world. If we wanted to, we could blast you to smithereens right here. They couldn't help you from the outside, huh? Nobody can help you. So please, you just give us the equation to gravity and uh, come to China with us. Otherwise, we blow you away right here. We would rather die. We would rather die. Just like Americans, always the wrong decisions. So 
So be it. must not be harmed. Who are you? Someone, Someone that, that could blow, blow you away. away. Squirt. Just asking. that you can call home. 